guys, it is Tuesday, and of course you can see purple on my glasses. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Uh, anyway, I'm on my way over to see that ear, nose, and throat doctor again. He um, is going to talk to me about what makes my procedure for fixing my nose um, more complicated. Um, it's so funny because whenever I talk to anybody about, you know, that I the fact that I bonked my nose and I need to get something done. People are like, don't get anything done to your nose. Your nose looks fine. It doesn't look any different. Uh, it is slightly wider on the end than it used to be, but that is not why I am getting something done. I'm getting it done because the cartilage, actually the cartilage that's supposed to be on the side of my nose that's toward the center is actually touching the other side, leaving the, the space for air to go in you know very constricted and in fact like if I put a q-tip <laughs> up my nose I was kind of just kind of feeling around in there for what the cartilage is doing and on this side the the q-tip just kind of goes straight up and on this side it goes all the way over that way before there's an opening and I don't know what it is about my uh, condition that is makes the surgery more complicated so I'm gonna go and find out today and also talk to him about some allergy things because he said I have uh, inflamed tissues in my sinuses so I need to talk to him about what I'm allergic to and you know like how I can how I can deal with that I have a feeling it's a food allergy kind of a thing because what could be blooming right now I mean there's snow everywhere and it's so cold uh, right now it's in the low 40s so that's nice that and the snow is melting but there's so much snow we got 38 inches total of snow in 24 hours and that is a record it has and so it's it's just nuts I mean there there's no parking anywhere because they push snow into parking spaces and it's just pretty uh, pretty crazy we John and I were over at my mom's the other day helping clear off three feet of snow from her back deck and we pulled down a 40 pound icicle from her roof and it was probably 10 inches in diameter in diameter absolutely crazy looky here I'm so excited this is my fab fit fun box and I'm gonna do a video on it so you can see everything inside so be on the lookout for that. Hi guys, I'm getting ready to leave to go to um, an acupuncture appointment. Today is February 28th, so the last day of the month and uh, doing my last acupuncture, sorry it's so dark right here, pampering thing <laughs> um, for this month. And of course my, um, my next mini challenge starts tomorrow where I'm gonna be playing my guitar sorry I was putting a ring on while I was holding the camera but um, yeah so I'm gonna be playing my guitar five days a week I'm excited I also have incentive to play my guitar more because my friend Donna and her sixth grade daughter are taking guitar lessons with me we started last night so it kind of is just inspiration for me to start playing my guitar more so I'm excited about that um, and just wanted to let you know that the deal with buying my mom's house is going through. We are um, already, you know, making arrangements with the mortgage company and um, my mom scheduled movers to come and get her stuff and we made an appointment to schedule our movers and uh, it's just all the stuff, you know, thinking about change of address and and uh, changing our utilities and, and all of that. We're um, planning to move, well, we're, our lease is up on the 17th of May, but we're gonna move a couple uh, weeks before that so that we have time to, we have to have the carpets cleaned and have um, our cleaning lady will come after we've moved out, the day after we've moved out to or is it the week after? I think it's the week after. And so they have a whole list of things that we have to clean in the place before we move out. So we'll just have our cleaning lady do that stuff once the apartment is empty. And I mean, they really ask for detailed stuff like move the oven out away from the wall and clean underneath the oven and clean behind the washer and dryer. And it's more stuff than any other apartment 
I've ever lived in. Of course, it's also been 20 years since I've lived in an apartment. But yeah, we're going to rent my mom's house from her for a couple of months. And then when our money is freed up from the CD where we put our money from the sale of our last house, when that's freed up in July, then we'll close on the house. I can't believe that it just like seems like it's happening so fast. So I can't remember if I told you this, but my doctor's appointment yesterday, did I tell you this? That he just thinks that my allergies are horrible and he thinks that I have food related allergies. And so they took eight tubes of blood out of me yesterday and then and just tested for environmental and food allergies. And then from there we'll, we'll figure out what to do to try to clear up the sinus stuff. And then if, if that clears up and my airways open up really well, I may not need surgery on that cartilage after all. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. And I'll let you know when I find out, but it's going to be really weird to, especially to be plant-based and gluten-free, if that's what it is, like, what the heck am I going to eat? Zucchini? I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's going to be an interesting little journey coming up. Also, just wanted to let you know that I put up a video on the March mini challenge that you guys can watch. And then I have two more videos, an empties video for February and um, what's the other one? Um, oh, my FabFitFun box that came and a lot of cool stuff. I'm very excited about it. So, And remember, if you're interested in FabFitFun at all, which is a monthly subscription box, not monthly, it's a quarterly subscription box. If you're interested in trying it out and you've never signed up for FabFitFun before, um, just uh, send me an email to busybeingjen at gmail.com. And that's all one word and Jen is spelled with one N. So busybeingjen at gmail.com. Let me know if you're interested in trying one of their sample boxes because I think you only have to pay shipping and they give you four full, full size products. So it would be a surprise. And then you get to just see if you like it. And then if you do sign up and you use my referral link, which I'll try to remember to put in the space below. If I don't, let me know and I can, I will make sure that I send it to you or, or add it to the comment area. But then um, if you sign up through my link or anybody's link, then you get $10 off your first box. And you can sign up so that you pay for each box as it comes, but if you sign up as a VIP member, then, and that means you pay up front for the whole year, each box is just under 50 bucks a piece, but if you sign up for the whole year, rather than paying $200 for all four boxes, you would pay 175, and so it gives you a nice little discount on every box. It's a fav my favorite subscription box that I've ever gotten, it has all kinds of stuff. This time I got like sunglasses and then there was some skincare stuff and um, an essential oil diffuser and just just all kinds of stuff so you pay just under 50 bucks or less than that if you pay for the year in advance but you get a box that is at least well it's at least two hundred dollars I think just finished my appointment. Hope that um, video clip gave you a little bit of a picture of what it's like in there. Uh, on certain days of the week she's open, you know, certain time frames and so today they opened it too and my appointment is, was at two which is why there, you know, were so many empty chairs when the, I left. Every chair in there was full and um, I asked her about treating allergies and she said she could definitely do that so um so i actually feel so much more opened up and i hadn't really thought about 
going to acupuncture for for allergies or for breathing um, because I had started going because of pain in my jaw and it's good for pain too but it was um, yeah it just feels really good but she said that I should probably come one to two days a week and the nice thing about community acupuncture is that there's a sliding scale and it's not based on your income it's just based on how much you feel you can or want to pay and so it's you know anywhere between 15 and 35 dollars that you can pay so uh so if you know if i need to go usually if i'm just going you know occasionally i pay her more but if i'm going you know several days a week then i pay a little bit less just to make it more affordable so that was that was really nice so if you've not tried acupuncture man i so recommend it and look up community acupuncture to see if they have something in your area like that because if you go to a private appointment at a you know place that does just you know the acupuncturist and you in a room it's a lot more expensive like it can be like $75 maybe more but when you've got 12 people in a room and it, it, it doesn't feel like you're surrounded by tons of people but when you have you know that many people who are getting treated at one time they can they can charge less which makes well look what I have here a bag of pine needles I actually helped my mom in the fall rake pine needles a few times and I gathered some up because I just kind of gotten in the mood to make another pine needle basket. Um, I will link for you, I'll probably put it in the video for you to click on here, but otherwise in the space below, a video I did on my other channel called My Flagstaff Home that gives a tutorial about how to make baskets out of pine needles. And so the first step in the process is to, well, I'm gonna wash the needles, the pine needles in some soapy water in the sink, and then I'm gonna rinse them out, and then I'm gonna pour boiling water on top of them in the sink, and that just helps to sterilize the needles. And when I say sterile, I don't mean surgically sterile. I just mean it rinses off any possible, you know, bird poop or whatever that might get on the the needles from outside if you're going to make a basket or something that you're going to keep in your house it's a good idea to clean things off like that so anyway um that's what i'm going to do and then you let the needles sit in the water to soften a little bit before you get started so i have the pine needles here in the sink and i'm using a little wooden spoon to stir these around just because this is really hot this isn't the boiling water but it's the hottest water that came out of the tap and so it was a little bit too hot for me to touch. So I'm just kind of stirring that around and see, well, I guess it's getting a little bit easier to touch. So just this is just the first wash to get any stuff off the needles and the water is on the stove for boiling. And so when I have, I'm gonna rinse this off in a minute. And then when the water is boiling, I'll put, put that on there and let it sit for a while to so the needles soften and I wanted to point out that it's important to find pine needles that are at least five inches long. If they're longer than that, great. But if they're short ones, like at my old house in Camp Verde, the pine needles were probably only about this long from here to here. And there's just no way that you could do a basket like that. You'd have little ends sticking out everywhere. So they have to be kind of long. So if you have long pine needles in your area, you can do this. If you don't, then maybe if you go someplace on vacation and you see long pine needles, you can grab a bag of them to take home. This is my, this is just a regular grocery bag. And that is plenty, if not more than enough to make a small basket. All right, now this, I had rinsed the pine needles and then now they're sitting in boiling water. And I'm just gonna, there's steam coming off there. I don't know if you can see that, but once this uh, cools enough that I can touch it, then that should be enough. It should they should be soft enough. And then I, I just I actually uh, take this and keep it in a Ziploc bag wrapped up in some paper towel, and it just kind of keeps the pine needles moist, and then they stay soft while you're making your basket. So I just want to show you this is a pine needle that has not been soaking. My needles have been soaking for about five minutes now, but this is one that is dry 
and if you try to bend it like you would need to do to weave something, it just breaks. If I take one out of here, they're still pretty hot. Um, this, this needle's been soaking, and so you see that it's much more pliable, and so then it's not gonna break on you. And this is how I store them. It's just a, you know, it's just a bundle of them wrapped in paper towel in this bag. It will keep them moist. And then I have this, this many more in the sink. Ow, that's still pretty hot. Um, and I'm just gonna leave them in there until it cools off a little bit more. And then I'll dry those out and I'll keep those in a separate Ziploc bag that is, you know, where these will be kept dry. And then I'll know that these guys have not yet been cleaned. The ones that are in the Ziploc bag like this have been cleaned and dried and only need to be re-softened when I'm ready for more pine needles. And these guys are ready to use. Here's what I've been working on so far. And you know, I'm, I'm not an expert at these baskets. So getting the, the lines to line up nicely are a little bit difficult. And the back, I'm terrible at making the backs look good. But thankfully this basket, you know, this will be on the bottom so it won't show. So the lady who taught me how to make baskets made this one. And it's just beautiful. And you know, the sides and the bottom, everything on hers is perfect. So, it's been, Monica, stop. It's been a long time since I've made a basket, and one of my viewers asked if I would do another video about baskets, and so I thought, well, I need to get back into making some of these. So, I don't know that I'll ever get to where I can make one as nice as this, but see these, um, the brown pattern in here? That's the end of the pine needle where, you know, there's like three needles that come out and they're all held together. And so right now on my basket, I'm cutting those ends off. But when I get to a point where I'm going to start creating a pattern, then I'll leave them on. So kind of pretty though. I mean, very pretty hers. <laughs> Mine is okay. Hi guys. It is Saturday morning. I'm on my way over to this women's conference at my church. Um, it's, there was, it started last night. Last night was a gathering with uh, women from different churches around Flagstaff. And then today is an all day retreat at our church. Everyone who was at the thing last night will break out to their own churches for the thing today. It's called the IF Gathering, I-F. And it's a, uh, a thing where, well, I guess their main conference this year was in Dallas, and then they decided to start a thing called If Local, meaning they want people to telecast, broadcast these, um, you know, the filming of the conference, and but have it in their own areas so that more people can attend, because not everybody can make it to, like, to Dallas or wherever they've had these things in the past and uh, there were like 1600 locations apparently that are doing this conference in their in their own areas 1600 not not like in the US all over the world so if you are interested in finding out more about it look up if i f gathering and i imagine they would have a a, a sign up for their mailing list and then next year you can, or what I would say is if you're interested in it, go to their website and find out where the local gatherings were and see if there's one in your area. Um, so last night it was from five in the evening until nine o'clock and there were a series of, of videos that we watched. They had some, um, they had a, a live worship band there and then they had a series series of short video things, so there wasn't a there wasn't any person who spoke for more than maybe 15 minutes. And then today, I think there's probably 10 more speakers, and I imagine there's going to be a, a worship team 
that they've assembled from our church that's going to be playing. And they're serving lunch and all of that. So, and last night's thing was $15 and they provided some food and stuff that they, everybody got this little necklace that you can't see on me right now that says it's just a little bar and that says if on it. The idea is, the reason why it's called if is the question is, if God is real, then what? What does that mean for your life? And what does that mean for how you live? So it was pretty inspiring. And there were a lot of ladies from my church who were there last night at this thing. I mean, there were people from other churches, but I would imagine that most of the ladies who were there were from our church. So I'm gonna be at that all day. And today's thing, I was gonna say, last night's thing was $15, and there were a few things that we got as part of that registration. And then today's thing is free, and they're providing lunch for everybody, and it's all day. So I imagine they'll do some like breakout sessions or things where at least where there's talk you know table talk and um, I'm, I'm just guessing that they're making it not just where people come and sit and watch TV <laughs> from 9 to 5 but that there's some interaction that they've planned for how this goes and I just wanted to let you know I'm almost to the to the church but if I give you snippets of the, the venue um, just know that this is our what we call our ministry center our church actually meets in an auditorium at a school a really nice auditorium and then we have this ministry center that's in a like strip mall shopping area so when you see the room it's that room that I showed you when I gave the talk for the women's event in the fall so just so you know our church is not in it doesn't meet in that kind of a small room but when we have extra events this is where our things take place water so the heart reflects the real person just as death and destruction are never satisfied so human desire is never satisfied we can make our plan okay let's get started um just a verse a single verse from the book of proverbs Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Above all else, guard your heart, because everything you do flows from it. Look beyond where we are. You know, you, Catherine, are a mom and a ministry leader, and um, there has got to be tension in terms of um, the care that you give to the folks in, in ministry and the care you give to the family.